from the White House. Thanks, Alex. Let's get some reaction now from Capitol Hill. I'm joined by Independent Senator Angus King, member of the Intelligence and Armed Services Committee. And welcome, Senator. I'm glad you're here and want to ask you about your reaction to the deal. Sure, Alex. Thank you. So what do you think well, when you my, hear? My reaction is guardedly optimistic. I mean, look, there are only two ways to deal with this. One is a war and one is negotiations. Negotiations have to start somewhere, and this strikes me as a, as a promising start. You've got a, a, essentially a six-month pause, uh, a freezing of the uh, enrichment uh, uh, program, and modest uh, uh, dialing back of the sanctions. This is a delicate moment. I, I'm frankly concerned about the idea of uh, putting on more sanctions in December, uh, because from what I understand, there's considerable dispute within Iran about this, and the hardliners are suspicious. Uh, they don't believe that the West is really going to uh, pull back on the sanctions. And, uh, you know, this is, a, this is, this is not a no-cost decision. Uh, if we put on additional sanctions and the Iranians walk, uh, we may have set this process back, and we're then on some kind of course toward them developing a nuclear weapon. So uh, I think this is a case of trust a little, a little and verify a lot. Uh, and clearly, we've got to look at the details, and we've got to see what's being proposed in the Congress. But uh, I, I believe Dianne Feinstein uh, and Bill Nelson uh, had it right. Uh, we've got to give this process a chance, be sure they're not using the time to gain nuclear capability. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, this could be the breakthrough that we've been looking for for 25 years. As you know, sir, the president faced a pretty strong criticism from this from a large group in Congress, from Israel, from America's Sunni allies in the Middle East. Do you think they're all wrong? No, I don't think they're all wrong. I think they're raising red flags quite properly, and, and this is a very important step. But I'm not sure what the, uh, what the alternative is if we... Uh, the sanctions that we have now are brutal. Uh, they're having an effect. That's why these people are at the negotiating table. I don't think there's much doubt of that. The new leadership wants to do something about the economic effect of these sanctions. Uh, the question is, how do we proceed? And it, and it strikes me that the negotiators have reached a kind of... It's, this is, it's important. This is not the deal. This right. is a first step in a deal that attempts to freeze the development, freeze the enrichment process in exchange for a partial relief of the sanctions. And if it doesn't work, if they cheat, if they're caught cheating, if they lie, the sanctions can always be ratcheted up uh, virtually on a moment's notice. So, uh, and, and the other piece that isn't getting much discussion is uh, people are talking about, you know, this is Obama and, 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 the, uh, and the Iranians. In fact, this is a negotiated deal with the entire uh, Security Council plus Germany. This is an international uh, negotiation that's going on here. It's not just us. And uh, as I say, I, I think we have to be really careful that we not do something that will undermine the, 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 the process of negotiations to the point where we're back to, you know, arm, literally armed camps, not talking to each other. And as I said at the beginning, there are only two ways to solve this problem. Uh, one is war, which I don't think is a very appealing alternative, mm -hmm. and the other is negotiations. And uh, let's take it one step at a time. But as you are well aware, there is a lot of disagreement over the Iranians' real ambitions. You've got Israel on the one hand thinking that they want a bomb, Iran saying particularly uh, with this new president that no, this is not what we're doing, that this is one of the greatest jokes of history. Now that may be an extreme statement there, but what is the intelligence that you are seeing? What is it telling you? Well, I, I should say at the outset that I have not had a briefing, uh, we have not had a briefing at the Intelligence Committee uh, in, in the last several days on this issue. We had a briefing on Afghanistan last week, and I'm sure we'll be get, we will be having, being briefed on this. But I, I don't think there's any question that Iran is trying to develop a nuclear weapon. They have. They, it's, a, it's some kind of uh, international bad, badge of respectability. But I also know that these sanctions are really hurting and uh, that I think the Iranian people are saying, is it worth it? And that's exactly what we want them to say. Uh, so I, I think they have been on this course, and the question is, how do we divert them from it? Now, we've got to be really careful. You know, there was a, a supposed deal with North Korea uh, 10 years or so, and it didn't work, and they went ahead. And, and I think uh, I know many, many members of Congress remember that experience, and that's why I said, you know, uh, trust a little and verify a lot. This has to be carefully monitored. 
uh, uh, very small steps, uh, but I think they're steps in, in the right direction. And my sense is this recent election in Iran did represent a, uh, a change of direction, at least partially, uh, and this new president is trying to do something about the economy, but there are hardliners, and that's why I say it's, it's, it, it's problematic to say, well, we're going to put on new uh, sanctions in the middle of this process before we see whether it's even going to work. Uh, on the one hand, you say, well, that'll increase the pressure. On the other hand, it may uh, give the hardliners a, the, the, the uh, right of way to say, yeah, see, these guys can't be trusted. Uh, we're going to we're going to walk away and and uh, go at our uh, on our own uh, pace toward this nuclear weapon. Uh, that's why this is a delicate moment in my view. Senator, do you do you see a day in the near future where relations between the U.S. and Iran are fully normalized, or is it always going to be more of a detente? Well, I you know fully normalized. I mean that's that's going to take a long time. Although you know we're now negotiating a free trade agreement with Vietnam. I think if you'd have told people in the 60s that we were going to be uh, doing free trade agreements with uh, the, the the Republic of Vietnam, they would have said, "Oh, that'll never happen." So you know history has a way of uh, of uh, changing perspectives. But uh, listen, the priority now is the prospect of a nuclear armed Iran which is not in anybody's interest not in Israel's not in the Middle East not in America's and the question is how do we do something about it And the answer is through step-by-step -step, carefully verified uh, negotiations and it is as I say uh, uh, a difficult and, and, and delicate process there are no clear answers if it were we wouldn't be even discussing it here it would be easy uh, but uh, mm -hmm. there may be a time when we have more normalized relationships with Iran, but I'm not predicting that. I'll settle for getting rid of the nuclear weapon capability. Senator Angus King, many thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Alex, thank you very much. And here's one quick last note for all of you. News of the nuclear deal immediately increased the value of Iran's currency. The real rose.